name is Daniel Devo. I'll be chairing the session. So our first speaker is uh, Mark Cassis, um, pro, uh, Instrument Program Manager at Keck Observatory, who will give us uh, an update on the uh, instrument activity at Keck. Uh, Mark, all yours. All right. Thank you very much, Daniel. Um, I'm going to launch into this. So just to make sure everybody's on the same page here, we're an optical IR facility with two 10 meter telescopes. I'm sure many of you are familiar with where we are on the mountain. Uh, we have approximately 120 employees. Uh, we are much like CFHT, are, we are close neighbors in Waimea, and that makes us a natural way of collaborating between the two institutions. I'm just going to highlight uh, one thing before I launch into what is going to be the focus of my presentation. I get to be very forward looking in terms of the instrumentation, and the technology that gets put on the telescope. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on. But I'm just going to mention that we are in the process of revising our scientific and organizational strategic plan. Our, our scientific strategic plan gets kind of refreshed every five to seven years. Our organizational strategic plan hasn't been updated in quite some time. Um, and the two focus, uh, I guess, groups that are focusing on this stuff are the scientific partners, so our Caltech UC community, as well as our other partners uh, that use the telescope. And then they're focusing on our basically our instrumentation suite, the science that we do. Our staff are looking more internally, looking at our organization, our community interactions. And so both of these things plan to complete in the fall. And that's gonna be something that is publicized and gets out so that everybody can be shared, can, can be shared uh, with everybody out there. So you can look forward to that. Um, but today I'm gonna focus on the instrumentation. And part of the reason why we are trying to refresh is that we've got a lot of old stuff. Um, I think a lot like other observatories, some of the first instruments are still there. In particular, we look at LRES and HIRES. HIRES we're going to replace, but I won't say replace quite yet because our uh, science steering committee doesn't want to quite release HIRES. Uh, there are a few people who want to hang on. But the point here is that there's a lot of uh, things that are just as old as the telescope, practically, at least the Keck one LRES and HIRES have been around for almost 30 years. Most of our instrumentation is uh, a few decades old with only case of WI and NIRAS or two recent instrumentation that are under five years. Uh, in particular, we look at our aging optical infrastructure, which you can see there has got an average of about 20 years. And that includes the recent addition of case WI. So we look at the optical instruments, that's LRES, ESI, DEMOS, uh, and case WI, along with high res. To develop new instrumentation, we've got a process. Um, I think many of us understand the process of building instrumentation, the reviews that go into it. The left-hand corner is kind of geared towards NASA and NSF because they're our major funding partners for Keck and how we try to build instrumentation. And you'll notice that the, I wanna say that the, um, the green areas on the left-hand drawing represent the places where we have SSC on board. Uh, approval. Once we get to construction, the SSC and board kind of drop out and we're just trying to focus on the construction of the instrument. Those early phases, which are in the design formulation phase, are um, funded by Keck a lot of the time, the earliest phases. Uh, we have a white paper process where we solicit new instrumentation ideas. Uh, sometimes we advertise a need that we hope that the community will respond to. Uh, that call annually goes out in May and the white papers are reviewed at the July SSC meeting. It's geared towards the uh, NSF deadlines, which happen in the kind of the fall. So this spiral diagram is kind of showing the process of how we go through our concept, our initial systems engineering and getting through a proposal process. And the chart that you're seeing is showing the, basically the top level is showing the instruments that we kind of move forward to construction phases and everything below what's dubbed the white paper funded are all things that are in a very early stage and not necessarily a go. But I'm going to talk about these things. First is the Keck Planet Finder because this is very exciting. The Keck Planet Finder is about to deliver. Uh, it'll supersede a lot of the exoplanet science that uh, HIRAS currently does. And the picture there is Andrew Howard taking a selfie of him with the optical bench. What's fun is that it's a zero door, completely zero door optical bench. And we've taken the first spectra with this system now, that's a, a solar spectrum 
uh, using a small uh, solar calibrator that's put on the roof of the lab. This thing is arriving in July. We're very excited about it. Here's a few other pictures. Zero door components. We've got the cameras on the bench, a few of the people actively working on it and integrating the system at Berkeley in the lab. Uh, this is very exciting for both us and them. Uh, and for those of you who knew the interferometer, the interferometer is gone. Uh, KPF is sitting on the right hand picture at the very end of that hallway where you can see that opening. That's where we would uh, tunnel underneath the uh, ground level and try to get to the crypt, which would be at the uh, bottom of the center of the telescope. We have some equipment that actually goes through there. Uh, the agitator system for the KPF is in there. And you can see all of our people basically providing new infrastructure to support KPF. One of the things that I will highlight uh, is that normally our instruments are slaves to the outside temperature. Our glycol moves with the temperature of the telescope. So all the instruments out in the domes are um, constantly being moved around in terms of their temperature profile. In the basement, we're kind of isolating this instrument and future instruments from that by providing new infrastructure that is uh, unique to the facility. Uh, the Keck Cosmic Reionization Mapper is another instrument that is going to be delivering very shortly. Uh, we're very excited about this because it's the red upgrade to a blue arm that's already in existence and very highly in demand by our scientific community. This is an optical IFU with a 40 arc second field of view. And there's a lot of things that you'll see uh, that delivered there. I'm not gonna go over all of it. Uh, a lot of these arrows are pointing to things that are being delivered. I will highlight one thing and that's the one in the right hand corner. This is a dichroic that was built by Asahi. It, we believe it's to be the largest ground-based dichroic. Uh, it's about six meters, a little over six, or sorry, it's a little over 0.6 meters by a quarter meter in size, about two inches thick. Uh, it's beautiful and they exceeded spec. So I always like to highlight uh, their work there with the instrument. Uh, this is the instrument itself. I got a little video here. These are things in action at the lab. So, so a little background talk, but this is the grading mechanism. The system is going to ride on this articulation stage. So it's kind of fun. Got the instrument scientist and our uh, point of contact, Rosalie, who's going to be, she can see they're all, you can hear they're awfully excited. I won't play the whole thing. You can play that in your spare time. Uh, ideally, this is shipping in August. Uh, we'll be integrating it on the bench and be available for science in the 23A semester. Oh, I got to move on now. There we go. I don't have any pictures of this, but this is the Keck All Sky Precision Adaptive Optics. This is something that Peter Wozinowicz is leading at the observatory. This is a, an upgrade to our Keck One laser system. The laser is operational. And so now we're moving into some of the other aspects of the project. Real-time wavefront controller is currently uh, being developed and commissioned. Uh, we've got a new wavefront camera that's being installed. There's new optics that are uh, being assembled and integrated with the instrument or with the, new, with the AO bench. So we've been making progress. This is due to commission, I think, entirely be completed uh, in another couple of years. A new calibration system, uh, an infrared laser frequency comb is being built by Steph Leifert. This is her pictured in the upper right and her team, uh, including Greg Dotman uh, in the lower right. They made, reached a major milestone, uh, which is they've flattened their uh, spectral comb. That's the, they were so excited that they took a, uh, an iPhone picture of this, the analyzer there and, and shipped it around to everybody. Uh, this is due to arrive in the fall. This is actually a COVID impact. So I know a lot of us at the observatories uh, deal with COVID quite a bit. I'm sure that's been a topic. But in this particular case, we are uh, purposely delaying the delivery of this instrument because we don't have enough summit resources in order to accommodate delivery of this in, uh, while both KPF and KCRM are in progress. So this is a kind of a decision that we've made at the observatory. I just wanted to share that because I'm sure other people are doing the same thing. Uh, but we are very excited about this. The thing about that, we get to use it with both Neurospec now, which is one of our near-infrared uh, high-resolution spectrographs, and in the future, we're going to use it with HiRes, which I'll show you in a little bit. This is HiRes. Uh, this is being done by Dimitri Malway uh, at uh, Caltech. It's an AO fiber-fed instrument. So we're going to put this into the basement as well. So we're, that basement facility that we're upgrading 
Uh, with KPF as the primary motivation is going to be able to support other instruments down there. That includes the laser frequency comb, which will sit right next to high spec. Uh, this is an, uh, designed to do a lot of exoplanet characterization, isolating the light from the planet itself and trying to understand the aspects of the atmosphere. That's going to dovetail with the laser frequency comb. It's, it's uh, precursor is an instrument called PARV currently in use at Palomar. They have both a prototype for the instrument as well as the laser frequency comb, and it's been working fairly well. Uh, ideally, this would be built in about uh, by 2025 and released for general use. Uh, these three instruments, high spec, now scales, and then one more after this called Liger, are all AO instruments. So we are in the process of trying to refresh our AO instrumentation suite. San, the Santa Cruz array of lenslets for exoplanet spectroscopy or scales uh, is designed to extend the wavelength coverage that we've done in AO out to five microns uh, with an IFU. Uh, Dino Stelter, you can see his face in the upper right. He's got a prototype of his slicer element. If you look closely, you can actually see the slicer projected onto his forehead. There's an optical design which is finished and approved through a preliminary design. Uh, we're trying to maintain our flexibility at the observatory. This is true for this instrument as well as the Liger instrument, which we'll show you next. It's designed to be able to fit at both our AO ports. We have two, we have the AO bench in the central image there. We've got two ports where the optical beam can be directed. The scales can fit at both locations. NERC 2 currently exists at that uh, upper right location, or what we call the folded port, the, um, or the direct port. The goal here is perhaps to allow scales to retire or supersede NERC 2 after a little bit of overlap with their science past 2025. So this is in a full development phase. It's not fully, fully funded yet, but we're working towards achieving that. The last AO instrument that I'll talk about is LIGER. Uh, this is an instrument being built by Shelley Wright at San Diego uh, in cooperation, or I would say a major partner with the UCLA IR lab, uh, led by uh, Mike Fitzgerald. This is also completed a preliminary design. Right now, we're trying to work our way through an MSRI uh, NSF process, funding process. Uh, it dovetails really well with CAPA, which we've emphasized, and of course, it uh, OSIRIS and NERC-2 uh, really further science on the galactic center work. So the focus of this instrument's main science case, its thrust has been to do uh, galactic center science. It has two different arms, uh, a lensing arm and a um, slicer arm to give us different scales, uh, plate scales and fields of view. And so there's a very versatile instrument. It really advances and uh, will supersede OSIRIS on the Keck-1 telescope. Two minutes, Mark. So, yep, thank you. So there's a lot of things that are much more on the horizon. Uh, these are highlighting a bunch of different other aspects that are in either conceptual or, or um, uh, systems engineering phases. In particular, the ASM is an enabling technology. It's an adaptive secondary. Um, we are very closely watching Mark Chung's work with UH. Uh, at Santa Cruz, we've got Phil Hins working on developing technology for uh, glass slumping and the actuators working with TNO in the Netherlands. Uh, and ideally, this would be an improvement, would enable improvements to the AO bench to push into optical wavelengths as well as set a GLAO system. Two other instruments that could benefit from the uh, GLAO system include a second generation LRES, um, Phobos, which is a fiber fed MOS that I've talked with some people at CFHT about. Uh, but GLAO could help a lot of our seeing limited instruments, um, um, including things like NERSPEC uh, and any of the existing instruments on the telescope. So just uh, if you have any questions about these, you can reach out to me. The last thing I'm gonna mention is that um, because we are neighbors, we do collaborate. And I, I love to see this happen within our community. Uh, my most recent, or our most recent collaboration was a Naira slip viewing guider. Uh, members of CFHT helped us develop a Hawaii uh, detector with um, a leech controller and read out a region of interest. You can kind of see that there. This was the full frame of the detector. Now we're doing a small region. This is now being used for IR guiding, which helps with science and keeping things in the slip. 
Uh, but there's other things that I think where we could collaborate on uh, detector controllers. We're thinking about uh, doing that uh, archons with um, uh, optical as well as IR inference instruments. And we're doing a deployment with NERC 2 later this year. And then we're with KPF uh, taking in-house now in a laser frequency comb. I think that's something that you have also in your lab. So there's ideas there. And then with fiber technologies, both in the UV and thermal, I think there's a benefit that we can um, work together on and to develop that technology. So thank you. If you have any questions, I will say that one more thing that there's uh, tables at the end of this talk that you can look at to see uh, get a summary of all the instruments current and future. Thank you, Mark. Questions, Andy has a question. Yes. Hi, Mark. Andy Shane is here. Um, so you showed us a ton of new instruments that are under development. Uh, my question is, where are you going to put them all? How do you decide uh, what, <laughs> what gets retired in order that's to make great, room for the new instruments? That's a great question. Uh, the retirement of instruments is a very much a hot topic. Everyone has their favorite instrument that they do not want to let go of. We've only retired one instrument in the history, or I guess one instrument module in the history of the observatory, and that was uh, the, the first light instrument, NERC-2, as long, along with its uh, partner in the forecast module, LWS. One of the things that's coming out of the strategic plan is a review, uh, an annual review of the instruments, uh, let's say annual, a periodic review of the instruments to understand what instruments we might be able to retire and come up with the metrics that um, give us the guidance for retiring things. But I think until we decide we can uh, build something, we don't get pushed into that corner. I will say I'm very creative at finding new places to put them on. Thank you, Thank you Mark. So there's no questions on the internet. So let's... Uh... Give another round of applause to Mark.